Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. We're here once again with Kazrak and a nice Beastman Vanguard, this time taking on the Skaven. So let's get straight to it. We've got Kazrak here, Sons of Goros, front line of lots of mixed uh, Ungor Spearman herd with some uh, Gore herd as well. We've got a couple regiments of renown also, a couple of Ungor raiders, got some hounds out at the flanks. A single non-ROR Cygor, just to provide us some long range, and a Bracium and Lord of Beasts as well. As for my Skaven opponent here, we've got some Skaven Slaves out uh, out front here, some Slave Slingers, Clan Rats, other various units here. Looks like the Teeth Breakers. Uh, we've got uh, Warp Lightning Cannon, Doom Flares, there's a Doom Wheel here as well, pretty far forward. Uh, so yeah, some Rat Ogres, and Lord Skrulk leading the way, so pretty straightforward build. These Rattling Gunners are going to immediately open up shots, and you can see the Doom Wheel also doing some really nice skirmishing early on as well, but I'm going to go ahead and let the Sons of Goros loose on this guy. Of course, the Armor Piercing. Oh, some friendly fire from that Warp Lightning Cannon as well, but some brutal fire there from the Rattling Gunners on the Destroyers of Drakwald and the uh, other regiment around the uh, Blackhorns Ravagers. But the Doom Wheel starting to take some hits. It's not too much damage yet, but here comes Kazrak. One thing to note about Kazrak is a 113 charge bonus with 400 weapon strength. He's also going to get that Apocalyptic Vision, Deadly Onslaught, up to 151 charge bonus. And look at the hit he puts on that Doom Wheel. That's the thing about Kazrak. Even though he's a chariot, he can very much be used in an anti-large type role in a situation like this. Look at how quickly he just deleted that Doom Wheel. So yeah, uh, lesson number one, don't try and play bumper cars versus Kazrak. Because he wins every time as the Doom Wheel gets absolutely destroyed there. Uh, meanwhile, you can see the Beastman Swarm pushing forward on all fronts. We've been able to push back some of these uh, Rat Ogres in war with the Ungor Spearman Herd. Skaven Slaves and other units getting beat down pretty hard. But we still have, uh, you know, the, the Poised Warhounds trying to get over there. There are these uh, Regiment of on Storm Bourbon, the Council Guard in the back line as well. And I have gotten some damage done on the Teeth Breakers. Hasn't been enough, though, as the Sons of Goros get routed. Some flares here as well. Going to be able to start mowing through some of my infantry. You can see they have done a lot of damage to the two ROR's here. But, of course, with their ROR status, they're going to continue fighting here. The uh, Destroyers of Drakwal, especially with their Poison Spears, will be great against these Rat Ogres. You can see them matching up decently here. They're wavering, but they're still going to hold their leadership together. That Resident of Renown status definitely coming in key. Uh, you can see the shots being dropped. Clan Vulcan's Tail Slasher is actually coming in now. And again, I'm just using Kazrak as a high mass armor piercing unit to try and bog up these flares. Even though, you know, he's not really meant for this kind of a thing. If he can at least uh, hold them back, at least for some time. Ooh, barely clips a few there. But the Ungor Raiders had helped, uh, helped see back those Rat Ogres now. Who are uh, intercepted those Chaos Warhounds in the back. But... The Bray Shaman now comes forward here, and again, he's going to use his chariot to try and bumper cars with those Doom Flayers. Uh, the Ungor Raiders providing some nice armor-piercing missile fire, and here comes the Feral Manticore going to drop down onto the Teeth Breakers. Make sure these uh, little Rattling Gunners can't get back online. Definitely want to try and keep them occupied if we can. They're going to continue to uh, fight the Manticore there, but yeah, you can see we have some rallying units here. Over here, we've been able to push back some of these various Skaven units, so... Uh, the Skaven definitely still in it, you know, balance power not too far out of favor for them, but things are looking a little bit rough as the Doom Flayers start to get uh, taken down here. Yeah, Kazrak actually has pretty decent attack animations for a Chariot as well, like the pigs in the front do attacks, and Kazrak also does his little drive-by slash attacks as well that do quite a bit of damage, so pretty good stuff for me. Manticore going to drop down now onto these clan rats here. The clan rats continuing to fight. Uh, not doing too hot, but they are going to get terrified away pretty quickly there. Uh, at this point, the Skavens, swar the Skavens are getting swarmed pretty bad. The Beastmen, you know, I was actually talking about this with a couple people, uh, a couple tournament players yesterday, and I think the Beastmen actually match up really well against the Skaven. Because you're so fast, you can get into these different positions to try and uh, swarm your opponent, you know, shut down their missile units. Um, and another thing, too... One thing that people don't often think about is infantry speed. It's actually a really important concept because Skaven infantry and Beastmen infantry are both very fast. In fact, uh, Beastmen are one of the only factions where the, your infantry can consistently chase your opponent's infantry. Like if you have a look here, you can see these Ungor herd on the uh, on the chase there can actually catch a handful of those unit models and just generally are able to keep up a lot better than a lot of other factions' infantry. So. Uh, that definitely helps play into the Beastman's favor here, and again, just the general speed and kind of swarm of the advance here can be pretty tough for this game to deal with. You can see the Lightning Cannon crew now getting inundated by Gore Herds. The Council Guard going to come try and bail them out here, but 
you know, Council Guard can only be in so many places at once, right? Skrulk's kind of getting run over a little bit as well. Ooh, a nice hit on Kazrak, though, even though that cannon crew is currently, you know, being fired on and cut up. <laughs> that Cygor Rock just destroyed one of those, those cannons. That was awesome. Over here, the uh, Ungor Spearman Herd finally get routed off. Did manage to route off some Rat Ogres as well, but you can see the Destroyers of Drakwald still fighting here, actually, as well. We're going to just force path them back, try and get on those Teeth Breakers again with the Poison and the speed of the Ungors here. As soon as they get a hit in, yep, those uh, those Rattling Gunners are in for some trouble. Kazarak, some other units being used to chase off routing uh, Skaven at this point. We've got these Poison Warhounds as well that can help do that. Uh, Skrulk's still relatively healthy, and these Council Guard are still going to be fighting as well into this late game, of course, because they're unbreakable. But we've got the two Ungor Raiders on station that can just keep, keep tossing in shots here. Saigor also raiding in rocks from above. Oh, brutal shot there. Uh, Skrull continuing to fight, and obviously the Discourage going to be a bit too much for these poor little Ungors, but uh, yeah, thankfully we've got another wave of Ungors coming in. And again, those uh, those arrows, the Flock of Doom and everything, just all the fire being concentrated on those Council Guard as the rest of the Skaven Horde is pushed off the battlefield. You can see here these Poison Warhounds going to shatter a handful of units there. And we're very quickly going to get to a critical army losses standpoint here. You can see even Skrulk himself decides to rout, and it's just the Temple Guard, or sorry, not the Temple Guard, the opposite of the Temple Guard, really, the Council Guard left at this point. Chariot Boy having some fun, trying to get through the wreckage of these uh, these cannons here, but... Oh man, that volume of fire is just so good. It's honestly what makes the uh, Ungor Raiders so good there. The fact that they have 90 unit models, and I mean, even though they only do 1 AP per shot, still, you know, that many unit models on a volley is quite impressive. They've got stock, they've got a lot of other attributes going for them. Looks like they're completely out of ammo at this point. They've got little axes out, cheering on their uh, Bray Shaman buddy and Kazrak as they come in to finish off the last of these Council Guard. Oh man, poor little ratty boy just wants to take a nap, and that'll be game. So what played to my opponent? Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that one. In terms of the army breakdown, yeah, as I mentioned, I do think that the Beastmen actually, this is one of the harder matchups, I think, for Skaven, because, again, they can swarm you so effectively. The Beastmen have mostly good tools for taking down uh, everything that the Skaven have. Like, even here you saw, well, you wouldn't think of using Kazrak as an anti-large, you know, <laughs> unit. He actually, because of that high charge bonus, that high weapon strength, he can actually bumper cars, especially other chariots. Like, I've had a lot of success against Doom Wheels or, you know, like Tomb King chariots, um, Tomb King character chariots, especially just in general, Kazrak, because of that high mass, that high charge. He can he can run other large units down pretty effectively um, on the charge at the very least. Of course, to a lesser extent, the Bray Shaman can as well. Both of them racking up quite a few kills and definitely contributing well to the battle here. You can see the Gore Herds as well, just racking up a ton of kills, 146, 95, 98, uh, 98 as well for the Cygor, a couple XP chevrons, I believe he started with one, I want to say, so pretty good stuff. 26 kills for the Sons of Goros, they did get taken out kind of early on, but, I mean, trading them for the Doom Wheel was uh, basically like a one-to-one -one trade, so that was fine with me. Um, you know, not having them in the late game wasn't the biggest issue in the world, because we did have these Poison Warhounds to help chase down routing units. Uh, for the Skaven side, for uh, Amber Skaven here, yeah, the Doom Wheel's definitely a good choice here, but I think he, uh, she needed to try and play a little bit more conservatively with it, obviously. Um, it's definitely not something that's expected, right, is that Kazrak, on his chariot, can just straight up bumper car you to death, especially in that quickly of a time, because, I mean, it was just it was a matter of seconds that that Doom Wheel actually, actually got taken down. But, uh, yeah, I do I do get the the... The Rattling Gunners as well, you know, having the slow effect on, on the Beastmen especially can be quite uh, quite impactful. Firstly, I might cut them out for the Gisales just to try and Lord Snipe as much as possible because none of the Beastmen Lords are very tanky. They're all, they, they are all pretty vulnerable. I guess Morgur would be the exception to that. Uh, Morgur is not going to get Missile Sniped by Gisales super easily, but even still you can snipe your opponent's caster. You could potentially snipe out like the Saigor or some other high, higher value units. So, you know, it's tough to say. Uh, Rattling Gunners, uh, Teeth Breakers especially, definitely a good choice as well here. But uh, it's an interesting one. From my perspective, um, just talking about, you know, Beastmen's... Beastmen, one of their main weaknesses is they don't have the best anti-large armor piercing tools. So just thinking about it on paper, uh, you could go in a couple of different directions with the Skaven um, in order to kind of, uh, you know, capitalize on that. The Doom Wheel is a good idea. 
but you may even want to go even deeper into it. Let's go ahead and grab Ikit Claw as our Lord. We're going to grab a Doom Wheel. Uh, we definitely want to hang on to Brass Orb. Unlimited Power is pretty good. We're going to go ahead and hang on to that as well. Uh, Musk of Fear we will also hang on to because we're going to be spamming Warp Lightning as much as we can with him. We're also going to grab a Plague Priest up on a Furnace. Again, a large unit with high armor. The drain effect of the Billowing Furnace is uh, quite good. And of course, we also want some Clan Rat Summons as well. So we're going to keep that Clan Rat Summon. And we might also take Blessed with Filth. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the Plague Rash, I don't know if I would really take this. I, I used to be that the Vigor, the Vigor effect was pretty impactful, but now... I don't think it is uh, quite so much, so maybe just something like that to make them a little cheaper. And then you could take the normal Doom Wheel, or if you want to go all out, you could take the Regiment of, Re Regiment of Renown Doom Wheel as well. Um, just to kind of go all in there. And from here, you could do a couple things. You're probably going to want the Council Guard, and of course some some numbers to give you, uh, you know, some kind of semblance of a, of a front line. Tail Slashers are pretty decent here, so we'll probably grab them. Grab a couple of normal clan rats, uh, a couple of them. Spears also. We'll need a couple of rat ogres, and uh, you do want some missile units. So now is kind of where you have to choose. Do you want like the Natty Bubos? You could also get the Rattling Gunners, and that almost gives you enough to go with uh, Gutter Runners here as well. Gutter Runner Poison, which could, could synergize potentially well. Um, with the uh, the rattling gunners, if you wanted to go just wider, I guess you could go with just lots and lots of slings. But uh, I definitely think the rattling guns, and then maybe we'd cut a, a little cost here or there somewhere. Um, like maybe cut this musk of fear at minus thirteen melee attack. Though every time you do a lightning strike is quite nice, not gonna lie. But uh, if we cut that, then maybe we could come in here and get like some gutter runner poison, something like that. I think something like this might be pretty solid. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But from my perspective, just having the three large, you know, armored uh, single entities, more or less, it's going to be tough for the, the uh, Beastman to deal with. And, I mean, one Doom Wheel, you saw it get taken out there pretty quick. Ikit obviously has better stats. He has a little bit more armor, and he has a much better missile attack as well than the regular Doom Wheel. So he's going to be a little bit, uh, little bit stronger in that way. And, of course, uh, you know, you're, being that he's your lord, you're probably not going to be playing quite as aggressively with him. That's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.